And of course, at the estate sale, when I was least expecting it, I found it. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl back with another great video for you. And today we are headed to an estate sale. Now, this is my first estate sale ever. So I'm really excited. I'm not sure what to expect here in the Jacksonville area because we are a large city, but we're not like LA large. So I don't know what kind of crowd is going to turn up on a random Thursday at 7.15 a.m., but we will see. I'm currently in the Starbucks line waiting to get some coffee, and uh, the state sale doesn't open till 9, so I'm not sure if I'm going a little bit too late or not. I know in larger cities, some people camp out overnight, particularly when Holt Howard Pixie Wear is at stake. So I'm hoping to pick up some Holt Howard and some other cool mid-century kits, and we'll see if we get any of that. I've got my lucky Emmons brooch on today, and I just cannot wait to see what we find. Well, it's about 7.34. I'm here at the estate sale, and I am sixth in line. So they seem very organized, very conscious of everything going on right now, and they have a list out front. And so you sign the list and then they call the names in order to go in the house, uh, kind of single file, which I think is really nice. So, so far this seems like a good experience. No pushing, no shoving, no craziness. Uh, it is in a little weird spot in a cul-de-sac. So as far as parking, it's, it's a bit tough. But I did get my name on the list, and I am sixth, which seems good. Um, and the lady's very friendly that runs it, and so we'll see. I might get the whole towered pixie wear, not 100% sure. Um, but that's one of the things I'm after. They also have some really cool fedoras and lots of vintage albums. And a ton of salt and pepper shakers. And when I say a ton, like four tables full of Japan salt and pepper shakers. So we'll see what I can get. I don't know what the prices are at this uh, kind of thing, uh, particularly here in Florida where kits just doesn't seem to be as common in our antique store. So I don't know if they're realizing that this is something special and they've raised the price or not, but we'll see and it will be a fun experience. Now, the estate sale website described this as a collector's paradise, and well, that it was. Check out all of these hats. Now, I did look over them all carefully. None of them really fit me, and they weren't quite my style. Lots of Brighton jewelry here. Didn't pick any of this up because it's not something I typically find for a sale. Now, I did get some brooches, and wow, check these out. Now, man, oh, man, did I hit the jackpot on vintage brooches. This bin was chock-a-block full of all kinds of vintage costume jewelry, and I had the best time digging through all of it. So this couple collected everything from owls to teapots to salt and pepper shakers to collector's plates. You name it. They had it, and it was pretty cool to see all of these owls in one spot. Now, this little guy I picked up for Carrie in Austin. She collects owls, and that Jimmy Eye Owl will be a perfect addition to her collection. It was just really cool seeing all of these owls in one spot because you typically don't see a ton of collections like this. And this little left an owl was cute, but he had some damage, so I did leave him behind. There were some Homeco owls here, and then some that weren't particularly vintage. Vintage. But again, when are you going to see this many of one item in one spot? That owl ended up going to carry as well. And this was just such a fun little thing to look through. And it was definitely a great collection. So the estate sale website mentioned that this couple traveled to all 50 states and picked up a plate for each state they visited. And well, here's the proof. Look at all these amazing plates. They don't hold a ton of value, but people do like to pick these up because they're fond of their home state or they remember a place that they traveled. And I certainly got to live vicariously through this couple. Now, one of the daughters was in the basement, and she told me that her dad collected all of these teapots. And I have to say, this is a pretty impressive collection. They had a lot of haul 
and amazing designs that you don't typically see. They had the genie lamp style and then those really incredible car teapots. Now, I believe the car teapots, they only made something like 300 or 400 of them. So they're super limited and I have not been able to find any online. So this was quite a collector's paradise for people that really know their teapots. All right, guys, we are back from the estate sale and it was so much fun. I really lucked out that my first estate sale was so well organized and I just had a great time shopping through all of the wonderful treasures that this family collected for many years. They had some great brooches and vintage items, which is pretty rare for Florida. You would think that since people retire here, we would get a lot of vintage, but actually that's quite the contrary. A lot of people retire here and they give away all their good stuff before they move because they don't want to haul it down here. So typically I find estate sales listed with, you know, some of the kids' toys or grandchildren's toys, lawn mowers, all kinds of equipment, and a lot of sports memorabilia. I don't find a ton of true vintage estate sales, at least in the Jacksonville area. I've seen some, but you got to drive pretty far, and uh, I haven't been willing to do that yet. So I am definitely gonna go back to more estate sales if I can find them because they are so much fun. I definitely caught the bug <laughs> with this one and I found some great treasures. Now I mentioned at the beginning of the video I was after Holt Howard and yes, they had an amazing collection of Holt Howard items, the jam and jelly jars, the creamers, the sugars. I mean, they had it all, it was amazing. But I wasn't able to get any of it. One, it was priced at $100 a piece, which was very expensive, of course, that is retail so the person that picked it up got it at a good you know retail price and she was probably a collector so she came in just before me i was sixth in line and she bought it all so i did not get any of that but it was really cool to see in person because you just don't see a collection like that all together in one place very often and i was very thrilled that i got to at least see it now i do have some really exciting treasures for you and i can't wait to share those with you now Okay, so this estate sale was a total home run in my opinion, and I was really, really excited to pick up some of the things I did. It was definitely one that you had to kind of hunt through all kinds of little doors and cubbies because there was stuff everywhere. They had a basement, which is really rare for Florida. I was like, oh my gosh, a basement in Florida? But that's where a lot of the good stuff was. And they had a back room that was just filled with jewelry. And at first I thought, okay, this is all bright and jewelry, not something I'm really looking to pick up but then they had bins of brooches as you saw and I had the best time digging through those and I got a great deal now I sold some of those in my drop sale with Patrick over at Trusty Huckster Mercantile I did a drop sale with him and a whole bunch of other fun youtubers here and that's up on my channel so you can still go watch that and see some of the brooches that I found most of them have sold but I think there's three still available if you're interested in purchasing those and then I have two that I didn't sell in the drop sale which I'll show you now. So the first brooch I found is very exciting. This is a Coro piece. Now I absolutely love Coro because Coro just made some fantastic jewelry and I love the faux pearls with the black in the center and then it's three-dimensional so you can really see the dimension on the side. I don't know if that camera is going to pick it up. There you go. It is just gorgeous and I love the detailing to this. It is an older Coro piece. It's got the rivet and the Y back. Now, now, Coro was founded by Carl Rosenberger and Emanuel Cohen in 1901, and after Cohen's death, they renamed it to Coro in 1913. So originally it was a Coro craft, I believe, and they just made some great costume jewelry pieces. So this will be coming to a future sale. I just absolutely think this piece is gorgeous, and I love the black with the faux pearls and all of that metal work on the side. Just really lovely. Now, the next piece I got, I'm very excited about, and it does have one little issue, so I've got to add a faux pearl, because it is missing a faux pearl right here, but this is a stunner of a brooch, and this is actually manufactured by Florenza. Now, Florenza made some great costume jewelry. You would think that they're named after Florence, 
Italy, but that is not the case. They're actually named after Dan Kasshoff's mother, Florence, and they were founded in 1948. They made all kinds of great jewelry, including some pieces for Weiss and Coro and other great names. So this is just a stunning piece. I'm holding it up here so you can really take in all of its detail because it's just amazing. They made a lot of uh, kind of Victorian revival pieces too, and this is just a gorgeous brooch. It is marked Florenza, and all it needs is a little bit of a new stone. So I just need to get a faux pearl and glue it in right there, but that is no big deal. The rest of the brooch is in amazing condition, and I was so lucky to pick that up. What a great find. Now, I've also picked up some amazing ceramic pieces or porcelain pieces, and I did get a lady head vase. Now, this was tucked in the way back with all of the brooches in a cabinet that you just wouldn't expect to find, and I snapped her up. So while everybody else was going down to the tool room and to pick up the whole Howard, I was digging through brooches and finding this fabulous lady. Now she's got a uh, flower arrangement in her head, which I don't think is original to her. Someone probably added that. It's got the floral foam inside, but that's something that of course would be easily removed if you didn't like it and she's got her faux pearls and her necklace, which is very unusual for these guys. You usually see the eyelashes broken off or the faux pearls gone or the necklace gone. Something is usually wrong with these. And this lady is in perfect condition. Now she is small, which I kind of like because you don't often see the little ones, at least around here. And she is marked Japan on the bottom. Now she's got a very interesting mark because she's not the normal Lefton or some of the other ones you see. This one one is Gun and Gun Japan. I think that's what it says. Now I have looked under the jeweler's loop and it's very scripty so it's a little hard to read so I've got to do some research on her to figure out exactly what that mark is. I've got a lady head vase book so I will look in that and I'll probably reach out to Dee over at Thrill of the Thrift to see if she knows anything since she collects these. But if you guys know about that mark let me know in the comments down below. I just love her white and blue. She is just stunning and was a fantastic little find. So she'll be coming to a sale very soon. Now, I also looked at the owls because this lady collected owls. Every type of owl you can imagine she had. And I picked up these amazing Lefton salt and pepper shaker owls. They are so cute. Look at these little guys. Aren't they just darling? Oh my goodness. So I was very excited to get these. They are marked Lefton on the bottom, Lefton Japan. And you can date Lefton stickers if you look up the different marks over the years. Uh, this one is Lefton Trademarks Exclusive Japan. So I do think this dates in the 1950s through 1960s range. If I'm wrong, I'll put a note here in the video. That's Louie. <laughs> she is very excited about all of these finds too. But man, oh man, these owls are fantastic and what a fun little find. And you gotta love those little salt and pepper shakers. All right, so the next item I found, I found with the brooches, and I thought that was kind of unique because this really isn't a brooch. I guess it could be a jewelry item, technically, but I think what this is is a tie clip or a money clip for a guy. Now, this is a snap-on tool wrench money clip or tie clip. It is just so cool. It's a little miniature wrench. Now Snap-on makes some great tools. They make a lot of mechanics tools, really high quality stuff. Their toolboxes are super expensive but extremely well made and I love Snap-on stuff. So since I collect a lot of tool and uh, vintage type uh, hardware store stuff, I had to pick this up and this is just amazing. So this is staying in my collection. It will not be for sale, but I just love the little wrench and it was like 50 cents or something. So you can't beat that. And speaking of tools and some other fantastic things, I found a battery. Now, a lot of you guys are like a battery. What are you gonna do with a battery? Even Louie's over there like, what with the battery, mom, do you want? But I was so excited to find this in the 
garage behind a bunch of stuff. This is a 1940s Ever Ready battery and it's got the cat on the front and it's a nine lives with the cool little lightning bolt. So batteries did used to come in these cardboard packaging and I just thought this battery was fantastic. And uh, I have a little story about this battery because when I brought it up to the front, I told the lady, you know, it's not priced. I don't know what this is gonna cost. And she's, oh, I'm sorry. I think that's really expensive. And I have seen these before listed online for between 40 and $50 if they're in good condition in the original cardboard with the price tag and everything. They don't typically sell for that much, but I have seen them listed for that. Sometimes they sell a little bit uh, less than that around the $30 range, depending on the size of the battery and again, the condition of the sleeve. So the lady says, oh, I think that's gonna be really expensive. And so she asked her partner and the partner at the estate sale says, oh no, that's just $3. Three dollars, I was like, of course I'll take it. I was so excited about this little battery because I love, again, all hardware related things, advertising, that's a main part of my collection. And so I was very excited to get this little battery. It's just so fantastic. I do believe it's from the 40s with this particular graphic and label. And it's just so fantastic. So this is a uh, nine and seven and a half volt battery it is a, a radio battery a b battery for radios and it is just fantastic so i love that and that will be going in my own personal collection so the next item i found i actually found in the basement it was among a bunch of sewing items and the starburst caught my eye and i thought "Ooh, what is that and i pulled it out and it was a fun Starburst tissue holder. Now, I just thought this was so kitschy, mid-century modern, probably 1950s, 1960s, and definitely had to have it. Now, this is Lustoware. They made a ton of kitchen canisters and other bathroom-related items, and I just thought that this was really fun. It's a plastic material, and then it's got a kind of rubber bottom with the Lustoware mark, and then you put uh, your tissue inside and then they come out the top like a regular tissue holder in the bathroom and this is for the long style tissue boxes it's got all of these little starbursts in the gold and this is just so fun so I had to pick this up this will be coming to a sale very soon in fact I've got a sale in the works with vintage Vinny so a lot of the stuff is for that sale and I was just so thrilled to find it a neat little treasure amongst all of the sewing items all right, so the next item I found was really exciting and I didn't expect to find it in the garage. So I was in the garage and there were a ton of board games and just canisters like kind of old-fashioned 70s kitchen canisters and random assortments of things, lawn mowers, this, that, and the other. And I was digging through and that's where I found the battery and right next to the battery, I found this amazing poodle squeaker. Now here's a little warning for all the dogs out there. Here we go. It does squeak, <laughs> yes indeed. And this guy is just so cute. He's in amazing condition. He's got his little red bow and he's got his uh, stopper on the bottom or his little squeaker. Everything is in fantastic condition and he was so cute I just had to have him. Now he is marked and he is on the side here. It says he's Aero Rubber and Plastic Company 1958. So he is marked and I just thought he was fantastic. He's such a happy little poodle that I had to have him and he was a great deal. So you never know what you're gonna find at estate sales and where you might find them. Now, moving back to the basement, there was a little tiny closet off to the side of the workshop and I found candles and I thought to myself, I better take a closer look at all of the piles of candles because they can't all be wax. And sure enough, I didn't get Lucite candles, but I did find some pretty amazing candles that you actually fill with lighter fluid. So these are the candle glow or amber glow rather candles in the original box. Now the box does have some wear, but the candles are in fantastic condition. They have their wicks, everything on them seems to be working. So they have this plastic base here with the gold. And then if you pull this little uh, rubber piece off at the top, you can see they have their wicks, which is fantastic. And then you can fill them. So this part unscrews and you can fill the candles 
um, inside and there's their wick. So it's a very, very cool little candle set. These are quite popular and I know people are always looking for them and I was just so excited to get these and they do have their little rubber base pieces so that you can stick them in uh, whatever candles, uh, candle holders you want. And I just thought these were fantastic and they still have the box with the instructions on the back. So this was a really great find. And again, make sure when you're out shopping for vintage that you look everywhere, particularly in something that you might at first glance say, oh, those are just candles, nobody wants them. Well, you never know, you might find some amber glow candles or lucite candles in a pile. So down in the basement, there were quite a few holiday items and there were just tables and tables full of all of this more modern Christmas. But I had a sneaking suspicion that there might be some vintage mixed in. So I really scoured through those tables and I was right. I found some vintage Thanksgiving items. Now these are girly candles and they're quite popular here in our community. They are not spelled girly like a girl, but they've got a different spelling. So they are uh, G U R L E Y girly. And these are quite popular. Now these were sold originally for 35 cents back in the day and they are just so fun so here's the pilgrim girl she still has her wick and then i also found the pilgrim boy so there he is and he is just fantastic now he is missing his girly sticker but i am 100 percent sure that he is girly he's in really good condition so these two were in the best condition and i did find another pilgrim girl although this one has a little bit more wear to her but she is still fantastic missing her bottom girly sticker but obviously you can tell that they're the same they've got the uh, bow detail on the back of the dress which is just fantastic and i just thought these were a wonderful find so i was very excited and i will be keeping louie out of the reach of the girly candles because if you know <laughs> you know louie my pug ate the head off of an angel girly candle that d sent me from thrill of the thrift so i'm very careful with louie and the girly candles now and uh, i am so thrilled to be offering these in a future sale so the last item I found was off to the side in the sunroom and they had tons of china. It was just piled high, a whole beautiful dinner service waiting for someone to pick it up. But it's not something that I typically look at because I don't sell on eBay and listing all of that honestly is quite a pain and shipping it is very cumbersome and it's just not something people are looking for in the live sales. So I kind of glazed over that whole section. And then later on, I called uh, some of my friends through YouTube on video chat and Carrie, Christy, Pam and I were all shopping the estate sale and I was showing Carrie some of the owls they had since she collects owls and I said oh and there's this room over here and I'm not really sure about it because it's got a lot of china and Carrie said "Ooh, that pink milk glass and I didn't even see it and so she was the one that found it and I picked it up and I was like "Ooh, yeah I think that's good so I went ahead and got it now a lot of milk glass isn't particularly popular right now. White milk glass just doesn't seem to be selling. Antique milk glass has a little bit more of a collectability right now, but not as much as the pink milk glass. What you want to be on the lookout for is pink milk glass, because I really do believe it's making a big comeback. And thanks to Carrie, I got this really beautiful Jeanette glass candy dish. Now this was probably manufactured in the 1950s. This is made by Jeanette in the acorn pattern. It has this beautiful press design with acorns and holly berry leaves, and it is just stunning. It's in a very light kind of blush pink color and it is gorgeous. I love the square design to it with the square knob on the top and the square pedestal on the bottom and of course I've got the tissue paper in there to protect the lid from uh, coming down too hard and causing chips because this piece is in absolutely perfect condition. So this was quite the find at the estate sale and I was really happy to get it. So this will be coming to a future sale soon so make sure you stay tuned to my Instagram to know when all of that will be happening. And of course, I'll probably be announcing it here on YouTube as well. 
So the last item I picked up is something I had been on the hunt for for quite a while. I have a big kitchen island that I do my live sales from and any video recording. And I have these bar stools that I picked up for the island. And they're great if you want to just have a quick meal, but they're not really good for doing something on YouTube for several hours because your back starts to hurt. There is no back to them. The stools are wood and metal, so they're very industrial, very hard. And I would come away from some of my live sales and live streams with a very sore back and I just had to lay down flat uh, for a while afterwards. So I've been kind of on the hunt for a nice chair with an ergonomic back that would really help me when I'm doing my live stream. Something padded and just very nice. But I had been looking around at office stores, I had been to Wayfair, and I just couldn't find anything that was the right height, the right cushion, and I had been thinking that maybe a vintage item would be better because they're just made better. And some of those industrial stools from like the 40s and 50s just just were made to be more ergonomic than some of the stuff they have today because they were manufactured for people that were in offices or warehouses sitting a lot. So I thought, well, one day I'll find one of those, but never seen them around here. And of course, at the estate sale, when I was least expecting it, I found it. <laughs> I was so excited about my little chair. So I was down in the basement. They had a beautiful collection of teapots and there was a desk and under the desk was this green rolly chair. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is just exactly what I need. It was the right height, right cushion, right everything. It was very industrial looking and cool. It had the green, not leather, but sort of like a leatherette on it. And I had to have it. So I asked the lady, oh, please tell me this doesn't come with the desk. And she goes, no, no, oh, you can just buy the chair and I was so glad. So I got the chair for $60, which is a steal for some of these vintage industrial rolling office chairs or factory chairs. Usually they sell for a good chunk of money, like in the hundreds. So I was very excited about this. It's got its original label and I'll post some pictures of it here because I'm sitting in it right now and it is great. It has an adjustable back piece. So my back is really nice and supported and I just love it. It is so comfortable. It rolls around, it swivels so I can turn when I'm doing live sales to grab new items on the other side of the counter. You can just tell by how much I'm talking about this chair that this is just such a big deal for me and it was a great steal. So I'm so excited about this chair and uh, it just goes perfectly in my vintage industrial apartment. Well guys, that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on a little journey to my first estate sale. I am already on estatesales.net looking for my next estate sale and I can't wait to go back and I'll be taking you guys along with me if I can. And of course, before my next video, I'll be seeing you over on Instagram at vintage underscore and underscore vinyl. And I hope as always that you will stay in, stay safe and binge YouTube. Bye bye everybody. Bye.